So what is psychology? How do we define it? Well, if we say that it is the science of behavior, it's not complete. It's actually the science of behavior and mental processes. Everything that you do, every action that you make falls under the guise of psychology. How we perceive the world, uh, how we move, our emotions, our thoughts, um, how we react in situations, it all has to do with psychology. So it's an encompassing kind of definition um, and it's such a broad, broad science um, that that's probably part of the appeal to it for a lot of you that took the course. So these are the learning objectives in module two, looking at our, our big debate and levels of analysis. Um, so have a pause and read those. And we'll first look at the, the biggest question in psychology, nature versus nurture. Are things inborn or are they learned? Is it biology versus experience? Um, and we have covered, you know, some of the ancient Greeks, uh, Descartes and Darwin, test your knowledge. If you don't remember, go back and find out what did they believe about the nature nurture nurture issue. Um, Charles Darwin obviously believed in natural selection. So he believes that a lot of us is, is nature. Um, all of those traits that, that have allowed us to survive as a species and move on and, and perpetuate our species are the traits that have been carried on. Um, an example of that that they might point to would be fears. Fears around the world are all the same. People list animals as their biggest fear. Um, heights, all those common fears are, are true in every culture. So when we look at something in psychology, we're going to look at it from three main levels of analysis. There are three different ways of looking at the same thing. If we only use one way, it's not complete. Um, we can look at it from a biological perspective, a psychological perspective, or a socio-cultural perspective. Encompass the term means biopsychosocial approach, or biopsychosocial approach means biological, psychological, social cultural, social cultural. Okay, so those are the three main levels of analysis. So if we look at this chart here, we can see any behavior mental process, there are biological influences that created that, whether it be um, a psychopathic situation or uh, how we work out in, uh, how we deal with certain family dynamics, anything, any behavior or, or our emotions, any thoughts that we have. There's also psychological influences emotional responses, cognitive processing, how we think about those things. And there's also social cultural influences, which have become a big deal because some of the findings we have that we have in North America, for example, may be different in a different culture. So all of these, these three main levels of analysis will go together. It's sort of like me holding up a piece of paper and saying, what is this? You know, with notes on it. Some of you might say it's a note page. Some of you might say it's a paper with ink on it. Some of you might say, uh, give me the pulp and uh, the chemical makeup of the paper and the makeup of the ink. It's, it's all accurate, um, but it's just a different way of looking at things. And that's much like how the schools work. They have a different approach at looking at things, but that's the common approach that they have. So our approaches and perspectives, we've got behavioral, biological, cognitive, evolutionary, humanistic, psychodynamic, and social cultural. So let's have a look at those. So behavioral is how we learn observable responses. When we see somebody react to something or somebody tends to uh, maybe a behavior that's bad for them, but they tend to keep going back to it. How, how does that happen? That's a behavioral perspective. What is it that's reinforcing that person to continue to do that? A biological perspective is how the body and brain enable your emotions, how your genetics have combined, your genes have combined from your parents uh, to create it within, with the environment uh, to create all the differences that we may have as individuals. A cognitive, we, we think of thinking. It's how we encode, how we process, how we store and retrieve information. It's our thought processes that we have. So that would be a cognitive approach. An evolutionary approach is looking at how is the natural selection of traits has promoted the survival of our genes. Um, for example, if we look at the fear, anxiety, for example, anxiety is a good thing to have. When something is going to hurt us, it's really a good thing that we want to avoid it. Um, however, of course, people with anxiety disorders may beg to differ somewhat because their anxiety levels are, are beyond the normal. 
and it can create problems. Humanistic, how we meet our needs for love and acceptance and achieve self-fulfillment. Psychodynamic, this is the more modern uh, idea of Freud's psychoanalytic approach where it's not so much about uh, how the sexual and, and aggressive uh, unconscious thoughts that we have, um, but it's more our unconscious thoughts driving our behavior, but it's based more on our relationships that we may have had as a child um, and with peers and so on, or family. Social cultural is how behavior and thinking vary across situations and cultures. And we will definitely be hitting that theme fairly often during the course of this course. The course of this course, I like that. So let's look at some of the subfields. Um, we have basic research. Basic research is, if you think of structuralism, that was kind of the idea. The basic research looks for knowledge. This is the knowledge. This is how things work, as opposed to applied research, which we'll look at is how do we apply that knowledge in real life situations. So we have things like psychometrics. Psychometrics is how do we measure those psychological aspects. So if you do a depression inventory, for example, a psychometric psychologist would have been the one that came up with that. How do we measure psychological abilities? Biological psychologists, of course, um, as we said in, in before, they are people that are going to research the how your brain works, the actual biology of things that happen in, in your genetics. Developmental psychologists are going to look at what are the common things of people from conception to death. You know, what are the common things we can expect as far as development goes, as far as social, emotional, uh, physical, all those kinds of things. Cognitive psychologists are going to look at our thought patterns, how we think about things, and what are commonalities, what are um, what are the, the things going on inside our head, inside our brains that, that help us form thoughts. And some of us form thoughts in a much more negative way than other people. Educational psychologists look at what are best practices for learning? Um, how, do we, how do we actually get across to people what we're trying to get across? How do we make education more effective? Personality psychologists, you know, what are the aspects of personality? What are the traits involved? And how do we form them? Social psychologists um, will look at situations and see how do people normally respond in certain situations. So all of these are basic research because they're looking at the aspects of it. They're looking at knowledge, general knowledge towards each of these fields. If we move into the applied research end of things, we have things like industrial organizational psychologists. They will take information, learn from basic psychology and apply it. So an industrial organizational psychologist will work in a corporation usually. They'll, they'll figure out hiring practices. Um, they'll figure out the best way to organize the business. Perhaps it would be uh, how do we compensate our employees? What's the best way to get the best work out of our employees and make everybody happy? Human factors along the, the same lines would be looking at how do people interact with, say, machines? Examples like ergonomic chairs, things like that. Counseling psychologists usually deal with people that are dealing with a situation. For example, maybe children going through divorce of a parent. The counseling psychologist will help, help them get through those types of problems. They're very similar to the clinical psychologist, but the clinical psychologist is more likely to deal with severe mental issues. Psychiatrists are different than psychologists because they're actually medical doctors. They are able to prescribe medication because they have a medical degree. Positive psychology looks at what are those aspects of human nature that make us make us happy and fulfilled in our lives. And that it's it's a growing branch. It's it's fairly new, um, but it is quite interesting. And I'm sure some of you will get into some of the the positive psychology ideas that are out there. Community psychologists actually don't work so much with individuals, but they look with communities. How do we make communities better the environment how do we shape the environment for people to thrive um, to, to create help situations perhaps in poor neighborhoods or, or any neighborhood but that's what a community psychologist does so module three our learning objective is to describe what psychologists in various professions do and where they work so the basic research subfields 
Um, again, we have the cognitive psychologist, developmental, educational, experimental, psychometric, and social. Um, and it's fairly straightforward. The cognitive psychologists, obviously, mostly experimental. They are going to begin looking at thinking. Um, developmental psychologists work in early childhood development. They work into geriatrics. There's all, all kinds. In, in fact, there's over 50 branches of things listed by the American Psychological Association of Psychology. There are so many things out there. And, and in fact, you guys need to explore it a little bit more to find out what, what drives you, what is really interesting to you. Experimental psychologists usually research facilities, um, universities, for example, and trying to find out more information on basic research and how do we apply that basic research. Psychometric um, they can be in many facets. They will they will work at figuring just out how we can put a number or a measure on something that's psychological that's, that's a little more difficult. You can't quite see it out there. And social psychologists, um, it's, it's huge. In fact, one of the big things that might surprise you, a lot of social psychologists now are being employed in dating sites on the internet. Um, they're looking at building the algorithms to match people up based on interest and what works together. But they'll work in, you know, in, in uh, all kinds of fields. It, it goes on and on, and we will look at those more in class. Applied research forensic psychologists uh, work in the legal system. Um, We've had actually many students come through this program that we have here that have gone on to forensic psychology and some of them have actually been quite influential in some of the research that's happened and we'll talk about that as well. Uh, we have health psychologists, industrial organizational, which I talked about, neuropsychologists looking at how our brain communicates with itself, um, rehabilitation psychologists helping people overcome uh, issues, whether it be tragic events, whether it be emotional issues or psychological issues. Um, a school psychologist will be there to help evaluate students, uh, help to develop individualized educational programs for them as the regular program doesn't work. Sports psychologists, a lot of you I know have been interested in, at least a lot of students I've had in the past have been interested in sports psychology. Um, this is just looking at helping an athlete achieve their best whether it have to be how do we deal with failure, how do we move on from things, what's the amount of arousal we should have, how do we, how do we deal with things to get the mind in the right place to achieve. So again, we have clinical psychologists, which are generally people that uh, patients would go to. And with the clinical psychologists, they, they will diagnose, they will give therapy and so on. Community psychologists, again, change the community to better serve the population. And counseling psychologists generally mostly deal with people dealing with situations. Now, a big difference between clinical psychology and psychiatry, again, and again, this is, I'm repeating this, but a psychiatrist is actually a medical doctor. They've gone through medical school, but they're specializing in in psychiatry, much like a cardiologist specializes in your cardiovascular system, your heart. Um, the clinical psychologist has a PhD degree where they study, assess, and treat people with psychotherapy. The psychiatrist may use psychotherapy uh, as well, but they are the medical doctor so they can prescribe drugs. So there's our history and approaches. Uh, make sure you go back. It's a lot of memorization with names and all that kind of thing. Apply some of your mnemonic devices that you've had and we will be moving on to the need for psychological sciences in the next video. All right, we'll see you guys in class.